God bless you. Have a seat. Great to see you all. Happy and singing and joyful. I love that. It's a great, great day to be alive. Well, there's so many people to thank for being here. Um, where to start? Okay, push the time. Um, my almighty God and heavenly Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, first of all. And to Tanya for inviting me to teach, for Kevin and, and Tom and Kevin, and, um, and to my husband, who has always stood with me and got me through a lot of stuff, and he's still with me. So <laughs> very happy to be here. Well, take your Bibles. We're going to get into the Bible here. Second Chronicles chapter 20. I think you'll be excited to see a little bit about Jehoshaphat. Try saying that. Jehoshaphat. <laughs> he was one of the good kings. There were a lot of bad kings, but he was walked in the ways of his father, Asa. And he did some really good things. If you want to get an overview of things that he did, you can go to uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 17 through 20, and that gives you an overview of his life. He was an incredible warrior. He had a lot of men uh, under his command, even more than David. He had a million and a half soldiers, warriors. <laughs> and uh, he, he was just a mighty man. So, let's start in chapter 20, verse 1. It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon, with them other beside the Ammonites, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, There cometh a great multitude against thee, from beyond the sea on this side of Syria, and behold, they be in Hazan Tamar, which is En Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared. I think that's the first time it talks about him fearing. And he had every right to fear, because he was coming against a great multitude. And Judah gathered themselves together. I love that. Gathered themselves together to ask help or counsel of the Lord. And they stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court. And said, O Lord God our Father, this is Jehoshaphat speaking, art not thou God in heaven, and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thine hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? Art not our God, who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel, and gavest it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever? Wouldn't you love to be called the friend of God forever? And they dwelt therein, and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, If when evil cometh upon us, as a sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house, and in thy presence, for thy name is in thy house, in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help. Now, behold, the children of Ammon and Moab and the Mount Seir, whom thou wouldst not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come and cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given to us to inherit. Our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that comes against us. Neither know we what to do. 
I love that. I don't know sometimes what to do when I come against challenges, when I come against you know, a brain tumor. What do you do? You have people gather around you and pray for you. And I love that. Um, yeah. Behold, I say how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. O God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. Our eyes are upon thee. And all Judah, verse 13, stood before the Lord with their little ones, their infants, their wives, and their children. That was a family gathering. I mean, they were all there, and they stood to hear the word of God. And I love that. The, the infants, not just children, but the infants and the children and the wives were all there. And I've listened to a, a Bill Johnson teaches this Second Chronicles, and it's really, really good. It's only like 35 minutes, but it's worth listening to. It's called Warfare 101. <laughs> and he is very passionate about his warfare. But he said at one of his meetings, he had someone uh, give a word of prophecy or prophesy over the, uh, the congregation. And as she did, she told the parents, go get your infants out of the nursery. Go get them and bring them in here. And I thought, man. And so they did. The parents went and got their infants, brought them in. And it was infants in the glory. I mean, those infants were absorbing the realm of God and knowing and things were being built in them that could be unbelievable in the future for them to have. He, explo he exposed, exposed them to the glory of the Lord. That's why sometimes I think we have to return to that childlike believing, to really see God, to really see his heart and understand who he is. And then verse 14, then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jeiel, the son of Mattaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And I'll tell you what, there's nothing like being in the midst of a congregation. You have so many people who are surrounding you with love and mercy and kindness. And I don't know if you, some of you knew that I had a brain tumor, and it was 10 years ago. And God keeps me whole every day. I mean, I don't rest on my laurels, but believe me, I am so grateful, Hayward mentioned it, that I am alive today because of not only God and the Lord Jesus Christ, but all of you that he sent my picture out to, that he said, pray for my wife. She needs it. She's got some things going on, and so he did his thing. <laughs> uh, it was a very uh, beautiful uh, congregation of warfare on my behalf. And I was aware of it. I knew I couldn't do this on my own. I knew I couldn't allow myself to be uh, not a, a ministry on my own. So that was a, a very amazing thing. So he gives them, he says to them, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid or dismayed by reason of this great multitude. For the battle, verse 15, is not yours, but God's. And then tomorrow, I would have been ready right then. Let's go now. 
But tomorrow, go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jerul. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand, st stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Wow. That I could do. I don't know about battling Ammonites and all of those enemies that came out against me. It says, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. And I don't know about you, but I, uh, I don't know if I could set myself and be still and fight at the same time. I, I, I don't know how I would do that. And, but they didn't have to make that decision. God did. And he says, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, and the Lord is with you. I love verse 18. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Verse 19, this is a fun one. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of Korahites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. I mean, when, well, thank you, Lord. And we're very happy that we're, we don't have to fight in this battle. No, they stood up and with a loud voice praised the Lord. And they rose early in the morning. That's a good thing to do. And went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, and so shall ye prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. I imagine some angels were doing a big work at that day. They had their, the, yeah, they had their uh, things cut out for them. Yeah. And when they began to sing, and to praise the Lord, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir to utterly slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, everyone helped to destroy another. I mean, that's why they didn't have to do anything. Because God had it figured out. I wonder why we don't allow him to figure out more things in our lives, right? <clears throat> and when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, there were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. I mean, that was a complete victory. And we're not talking just one left. It was a complete victory against a great multitude. Go to Malachi. Keep your ribbon here and go to Malachi chapter 4. And in verse 2. Malachi chapter 4 and in verse 2. 
But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness, who do you think that's talking about? <laughs> yes. The Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. And I love that because when Jesus walked this earth, he had holiness. He was holiness. And he went about releasing that. Every time he healed someone, he was releasing holiness to people. Now, that's a pretty big, amazing task. But he did. He demonstrated his holiness every time he ministered to somebody. He was imparting holiness. And I thought, boy, may I do likewise. And it says, and go forth and grow up. That means to leap, to leap with joy. Leap for joy because you have the son of righteousness who has healed you. And go back to Second Chronicles 20. If you're there already. <clears throat> and they rose early in the morning. I already read that. Verse 21, And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. And of course, that's when they began to sing and praise that God did his thing. And the, the phrase, the beauty of holiness, is only used three other times. You can write these down if you want to, but it, they're, they're pretty uh, similar. First Chronicles 16, 27 through 29. Psalm 29, 1 and 2. Psalm 96, 6 through 9. The beauty of holiness is equal to his glorious sanctuary. That's his, what it's equal to, the whole beauty of holiness. <clears throat> There's a lot of wonderful things in here. I think I'll just... Um, and what happened was the fear or dread of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they had heard that the Lord fought against the enemies of Israel. They had a reputation. They did not want to mess with them. So the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet. Can you imagine the difference? being besieged by multitudes, but they were, they were quiet, and for his God gave him rest round about. And I just want to close with something that happened to me yesterday morning at 3 o'clock. <laughs> I woke up, and I, I even woke Hayward up. Because um, I had dreamed a remarkable dream, and believe me, I don't dream. If I do, I don't remember it. But I do not dream. But if I do, I was, you know, it says that old men shall dream dreams. Well, I'm an older woman, and I think I dreamt a dream <laughs> that was very powerful. There was a flurry of activity. I can't pinpoint people who were there, but there was a flurry of activity in the beginning with a number of saints receiving revelation and God-breathed word, and it was, it was very, very wonderfully um, shared. And, but God gave me a picture of Jesus 
hugging me. And Casey's going to put up this picture. I love that picture. That's always rocked me. That's always helped me to remember who holds me. And you know what? I didn't really know much about Jesus. I didn't care. I just had God, and that was enough. But you know what? It wasn't enough. And I know that uh, it reminded me of John 17, where it talks about where Jesus declares that we are one as he and his Father are one. I felt myself meld into Jesus and become one with him. That was an amazing, and I knew it was true because I woke up and I was like this. And I knew he was hugging me, he was helping me. But God at that moment brought us together as one and I woke up, like I said, with my arms wrapped around me with such elation that I just had to tell Hayward what I had dreamed, so, yeah. Father, so grateful, so grateful that you and Jesus have us in the hollow of your hand and that you allow us to be a part of this great body of Christ, that we can help each other, that we can encourage one another, that we can give great praise to you in the beauty of holiness. Thank you for allowing us to do this, that whatever warfare we are engaged in, whatever uh, amazing things that we have to tackle in life, that you say to us, you shall not fight in this battle, for I will fight for you. And I know Jesus Christ is right there too. So Father, I give you these people, I give you their hearts. The battles that they are engaged in, Father, you just help them to win. And I'm so grateful, Father, to be surrounded by such wonderful believers to have you and Jesus in our midst. So, Father, I give you this, this praise, this praise, this beauty of holiness. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.